Hello, my name is Robert Post, and it is currently 9.08 p.m. on Sunday of October. Today, I will be discussing Ben McHaleson's Touching Spirit Bear. This book starts with 15-year-old Cole Matthews robbing a local store and openly bragging about it at his high school the next day. Though he has done this many times in the past, this time is different, as a freshman named Peter Driscoll decides to tell the police. Cole has had a history since he was a small child of committing crimes, so the police are not shocked, but because it has happened so often, they decide that this time he will be tried as an adult. Hearing this, Cole goes into a blind rage, and when school ends, finds Peter and beats his goal against the side of the curb until it has obviously reopened, leaving him on the cusp of death. This only adds to the punishment he will be receiving, so the police now say that he may be spending life in prison. Soon, a local spiritualist named Garvey, who is part of the local group known as Circle Justice, gives Cole two options. The first is he can accept his sentence with life in prison and be stuck there forever, or he can go onto a remote island hundreds of miles away from the closest living human and try and survive for a year to hopefully learn his lesson. Cole, seeing it as a way to finally get out of the prison system, the town, and his abusive father, decides to go to the island. As soon as he gets there, Cole immediately burns down a small cabin that was built for him to live in, and in the dead of night, strips to his underwear and tries to escape. His endeavor is ultimately useless as he ends up swimming against the tide and makes no progress, going back to shore and sleeping in the warm atch that used to be his cabin. Over the next few days, his rage never leaves until it boils into a point when he sees the elusive spirit bear and tries to kill it. He ultimately fails as the bear mauls him, leaving a hole in his chest, all his ribs broken, his legs broken, his right arm broken, and him barely able to breathe, constantly choking a mix of, sal on, of saliva and blood. Over the next few days, he sits there, unable to move, just trying to survive, and notices a small nest of birds. He despises them, saying that once, he, once or if he recovers, that he is going to personally kill them because they are so insignificant to him. Hours later, a storm passes by and destroys the tree they are in, killing all of them. He sees their bodies and the mother frantically searching for them, now alone and without a home. And for the first time in many years, Cole feels bad for someone and realizes that to the bird, her babies meant as much as her as living does to him. Soon after, Cole is saved when Garvey goes to check on him after a few days and is immediately taken to a hospital. Cole then returns to the island, this time under the supervision of Garvey and Edwin, leader of the Circle of Justice. They rehabilitate him and have him do many things to help himself develop as a person before leaving him to do it himself. This time things are different, and he actually learns and reflects on how awful of an individual he is. One day, Edwin goes to the island to tell Cole Peter has tried to kill himself. A few days later, Edwin arrives again and says Peter has tried yet another time. Cole, feeling awful, says that Peter should come with him. Edwin, reluctant at first, agrees, as his condition is only getting worse, and with no one in sight, they have no idea what to do. They eventually convince Peter's parents to let this happen, but only under Garvey's supervision. Then, they both stay on the island for days and heal together, with Peter antagonizing Cole constantly. But Cole stays calm and even lets Peter have the cabin show how much he is willing to sacrifice to help him. After a while, Peter opens up to Cole, and realizes he truly has changed, and the book ends with them promising to finish their time on the island together, and to work together. I personally like the fact that this wasn't like the most stories where after one has committed a heinous act, the character they did it to will almost immediately trust them, and that it took a course of many days and, or weeks until Peter is even willing to talk to Cole, showing that change isn't an instant process, but rather something that slowly happens over time. And even when progress is made, it isn't instant, nor is it a sign of absolute trust, but more so of toleration. One critic I would have would be that Peter's involvement in the book is just kind of forced, and it ha just happens randomly. And we get no background information as to why he has been, I mean, as to what he has been doing in the past year. And those involvement to the plot is gigantic in the end, it feels almost forced and comes out of nowhere. I've compared this to the book of Life of Pi, where a tiger is just one of the main plot points and kind of just comes out of nowhere midway into the story, with a lot of previous evidence, with no previous evidence or motive to this event happening. Overall, I did enjoy this book immensely, and I feel it is a phenomenal read to anyone that is a fan of a book about the idea of deep introspection and one facing a world that they have no control over, but will show superiority whenever it gets the chance.